Share love here and me, black people. I want to know, do you know who Mandalini is? Wait, who's Mandalini? I don't know who Mandalini is. Nothing. <laughs> um, I don't know who Mandalini is. Hmm. Um, was he from Africa? I don't know. What, was he from Africa? Um, Martin Delaney? Well, I don't really Martin know. Martin Delaney. What is black nationalism? It is defined as black unity, self-determination, independence, or sovereignty from European culture. In other words, we should be free to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, house ourselves, educate ourselves, defend ourselves, and medicate ourselves as a people without the help from another group of people. Martin Delaney is what most would say is the grandfather of black nationalism because he was one of the first who made us pay attention to this movement. Martin Delaney was an army officer, doctor, writer, and freedom fighter. He was born in Virginia in 1885. All four of his grandparents were captured in Africa and brought to America as slaves. His mother was free, so by law he was born free. But his father was enslaved. The importance of education was taught to Martin and his siblings by his mother. He could read and write at a young age, which was against the law back then. In 1822, the lady's mother walked 20 miles to a courthouse carrying her children to defend them from being sold back into slavery. And she won. At age 19, he understood that Africa was his homeland and wanted to go there someday. In 1843, Delaney started one of the earliest newspapers called The Mystery. The Mystery talked about abolishing or ending slavery. In 1847, Frederick Douglass, another freedom fighter, made Delaney co-editor of his newspaper, The North Star, but Delaney left in 1849 to study medicine. He made his way to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. While Pittsburgh, he studied medicine under several doctors. He decided to go to medical school. He got 17 letters from doctors saying how good he was, but no university would let him in because he was black. But in 1949, Harvard University accepted him and two other black men. The whites at Harvard complained so much about them being there that they were told to leave because they were African. He returned to Pittsburgh after months at Harvard to practice medicine there. Delaney would practice medicine on and off for the rest of his life. In 1852, he wrote the condition, elevation, immigration, and destiny of the colored peoples of the United States. It was the first widely read call for black nationalism. He helped organize the National Immigration Convention of Colored People and led a trip to Africa in 1858. He talked with several tribes so that Africans in America could move or settle there. When he returned to America, it was the middle of the Civil War and he got the president, Abraham Lincoln, to make him the first ever black major in the army. He was in charge of recruiting African men into the army. All through his life, Martin Delaney continued to fight for the rights of African people. In 1859, he wrote the book Blake. He was tired of talk and books written about so-called happy slaves. He has seen and heard stories by enslaved Africans from their experiences working on the Underground Railroad about how terrible they were treated and the many revolts that they were a part of. He wrote, My house is my castle. If any man approaches my house in search of a slave, 
If he crosses the threshold of my door and I don't lay him a lifeless corpse at my feet, I hope the grave refuse my body a resting place. And righteous heaven, my spirit home. The lady was clear about slavery, how it was wrong, and he wrote about it. Martin Delaney remains one of our most important ancestors. His life should be celebrated and known by all African people.